Hello everyone, welcome to this video series on mobile automation using APM. In today's video, we will see what is visual UI testing and how we can achieve it using APM. So as the name implies, visual UI testing is the testing of uh, the visual aspects of the application under test. It could be a desktop application and very well it can be a mobile application as well. So the look and feel of the application, it should be as expected so that we give the best experience to the end user. So visual uh, UI testing compares the visual changes to ensure only the intentional changes to the UI are being pushed to production. And uh, I've seen generally people have this misconception that visual testing is not necessary when robust and broad functional tests are being carried out, uh, but this is not true. Because visual testing catches defects which are not easily detected by functional testing. Uh, whereas the functional testing validates whether your application works as expected, visual testing validates that your UI and your screen uh, are appearing as expected. Both are super critical for a uh, uh, successful software development lifecycle. Some of the examples of visual defects which are not easily found using functional testing are pixel to pixel comparisons, alignment layout of the various UI elements, the rendering and the overlapping of the UI elements, be it web element or mobile element, and as well fonts as well. So whether the fonts and uh, the text on the application, they are appearing in the expected size, color, and type. So all these can be easily identified uh, if we have a, an, a, any kind of changes using visual UI testing. An example of visual bug uh, I have, I'm showing you on the screen right now. So this uh, uh, shopping cart, it is appearing somewhat in the middle of uh, the screen. Uh, it has got shifted from its original position of here to here to do some change, uh, due to some unexpected change done by the developer. So these kinds of defects are called as uh, the visual bugs these bugs are very tricky and very complicated to be identified using functional testing because not for every element we do the localization testing like getting the coordinates and then uh, validating their height width breadth etc so functional testing not always is able to find out such defects however this can be easily identified using visual ui testing uh, now we have multiple paid tools available in the market uh, which we can use to do uh, visual UI testing. But if we consider the open source tools, there is a very good solution provided by APM using APM image plugin. Now this image plugin is one of the official plugin which is provided by APM 2.0. It is not available in APM 1. Using this plugin, we can compare the current application screen with a baseline image and we can get how much percentage uh, the image is matching, uh, which we use, which we evaluate using a match score. So uh, the current version of the application, for example, version two of the application, uh, its uh, screens will be compared with the baseline image and uh, we will get a score if both the uh, uh, if if we don't have any changes in the screen then uh, the match score will be 1 which means they are exact match uh, the version 2 has not introduced any visual bugs it is working as expected however if there is any deviation if there is any uh, slightest of change between the version 2 and version 1 of the screen then it's going to give a score which would be somewhat less than 1 Right, and it will. Uh, one of the other advantage of this plugin is that it gives very good visualization results, where we can easily uh, pinpoint where uh, there is a mismatch between uh, the current version of the screen and the baseline version of the screen. We will see in the demo; it will become very clear. So we have like four steps of doing uh, visual automation testing using APM. So first of all, we need to install the plugin. Uh, call images okay and then we have to invoke the apm server by using this uh, plugin in the third step we have to do the setup and 
design the visual test and in the fourth we will uh, run the visual test and we will validate the results so let's get started with the step one so let me just open my command prompt okay and let me clear it okay so um, the command to install uh, the plugin is apm plugin and we want to install it and the name of the plugin which is images okay so i already have apm installed and now we are installing the image plugin and in my case i have installed the image plugin as well that is the reason i'm uh, i'm getting this error saying that a plugin named image is already installed if you can if you want to update it i can do that but in this case uh, i want to stick with the existing version of uh, the image plugin in your case if you have not installed the image it's uh, it's going to install this image plugin and that way uh, step one will be completed in the next step which is uh, the step number two uh, we have to invoke uh, the apm server using this plugin so how we can do it we just need to type apm here and if i press enter right away it's not going to use that plugin okay although the plugin is installed it is not in use so to tell the apm server that we want to launch the apm server and we please keep this plugin ready for use the command would be apm hyphen hyphen use plugin equal to images okay and this is the images plugin which we have installed in the step one so this command is going to launch uh, the apm server on the default port and the default address uh, i've started it on my local host on 4723 that's the default port of apm and uh, as we can see from this message it is saying that we are making use of the images plugin so the plugin is warmed up and ready to be used by the test design and the test case which we are going to design now okay so that's the expected output and the third step now is to design our test and run the visual test so for this for the test case designing we can use any editor of our choice uh, in my case i'm using eclipse and this is the method which is doing uh, the job of visual validation for me and uh, i'm doing this visual validation from for a screen called home screen okay so we are doing just one screen uh, visual ui validation of just one screen but uh, in uh, in practical uh, based on the requirement there could be hundreds of screen that we can validate using this method okay now let's see how this method looks like so let's get inside it it is a simple test ng test which i have designed um, so let's open it and uh, let me bring this little down so that you can see the complete screen okay so that is the method uh, in the initial part of the method we are just uh, specifying where we want to store our base images where is the database of our baseline images so it is at this location and we have defined some constants here uh, then we have this if block so in case we do not have uh the particular image in our uh, database right we don't have a baseline of the image then uh, this block creates a baseline image for us and this baseline image will be used for further validation in case it is able to identify the baseline image then it's proceed to do uh, the image comparison and uh, here using this um, class we are in enabling the enable virtualization uh, enable visualization which uh, will help us to uh, show uh, the result uh, in a side by side comparison and it also it will highlight the changes if there is if any between the current version and the baseline version so we are just enabling uh, visualization here 
and uh, similarity uh, matching result class so this is the most important uh, class which offers this get score method using this get score method we get a percentage or we get of uh, you know a fraction of how much uh, the difference is between the uh, current version of the screen and the baseline version of the screen so uh, the match threshold constant we have provided it as one which means that um, if it is less than one if there is any slighted slightest of change then we will be throwing an exception and we will say the test case is failed so if it is an exact match then uh, it's going to pass the test script and uh, it's going to give us the results so it's a very uh, straightforward method in which uh, these two classes are very important uh, similarity matching option and similarity matching results and in this result object we are uh, we are uh, using uh, the method get score to get uh, the fraction of how much uh, percentage uh, the you know uh, comparison is giving us between uh, zero and one one being uh, it's a perfect match and if there is any slightest of changes uh, between uh, the uh, current version and the baseline then it the score would be less than one it will be between zero to zero point nine nine okay so that's the method and if i go back to the visual test um basic test class here i'm just calling it and uh, i'm invoking the apm driver in the base class itself so that's very straightforward way we are using the capabilities to uh, launch uh, the apm driver so without further ado let's start the validation um the image database uh, path which is provided in the method is uh, here so if i go to desktop and validations here i already have two images for the sake of this demo let me delete it okay so right now our image database is empty and uh, when i run this uh, when I run this uh, 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 test, um, it's not it, it it won't be able to find any uh, baseline image for the home screen. So in this case, that if block uh, will get executed and it will capture uh, the baseline image, which will be used for further validation. So the APM service is already up and running, and this uh, plugin is also warmed up so let's run our test um, yeah. so this is my physical device on which uh, the test will be run uh, the application which we are using for this uh, demo it would be the source labs app source labs, source labs demo app and uh, that's the home screen which we are verifying so let's see what is the output it's saying that no baseline image found for home screen uh, uh, capturing the baseline instead of checking instead of doing the image comparison it is capturing the baseline image and it makes sense because initially your image repository will be empty and after the first run we would be capturing all uh, the baseline images for the application uh, which will be used for subsequent image comparisons okay so this is the baseline image of the home screen of the demo app it is captured and it is ready so now assume that um, the source lab developers they have released a new version of uh, the demo uh, of the demo app and uh, we need to make sure that this new version is working as expected the visual aspects of the screen is as expected uh, there is there should not be any misalignment any font changes or you know there should not be any visual bugs in this version 2 so assume that now uh, the source lab demo app is on version 2 and we want to run this visual test so what will happen the screens of version 2 it will be compared with the baseline image from version 1 and uh, if there is any difference it will be highlighted on the screen itself so 
let's run it again so this test assume that it's uh, it's running on the version 2 of the source lab app okay so again i will share with you the screen So assume that's the version 2 of the app and in this case we cannot see any changes but in reality if a bug is introduced this suppose this product is shifted in its place then it would be caught in the uh, visual uh, test. So the test is completed and let's see the status of the test. Uh, we can see it has failed. Uh, so if I just go through it. It's saying that uh, the visual check of home screen is failed. Similarity match was only 0.99 and below the threshold value of one. So uh, that's the reason it has failed uh, the test script. Uh, suppose it, if it was one, then it was a perfect match. But in this case, we have some differences between the actual and expected. That's why the matching score is coming as 0.99. So there is some difference. Okay, it's not a perfect match. So let's see what is uh, the difference. So if I go back to my image repository, I can see a new screenshot is generated. And if I just open it on uh, the left hand side, I can see uh, the version two of the app okay that's uh, the uh, screen which is compared and on the right hand side i have the baseline image okay so we can see there is no changes in the screen however if you look at the top part of the screen uh, the mobile clock it has uh, you know changed so when the baseline image was take, uh, taken it was uh, 2102 and uh, when it was uh, ran the second time then the clock changed to 2104 that's the reason it is uh, highlighting that we have a change here so similarly the uh, network uh, it might have got more coverage so there could be some change so this image plugin it does pixel by uh, pixel comparison so it is highly accurate so that's the reason it is able to identify this small small issues as well so in this case these are false positive because we can see nothing substantial has changed in the application these things are not part of the app so uh, it's i mean uh, the version 2 and version 2 are as expected and it has failed because it is a false positive so that's expected okay so that's how this plugin gives you amazing results it is giving you comparison between both the versions of the app and it is highlighting the results suppose in the version 2 which is the left hand side uh, there's a uh, um, shopping cart basket if it is displaced or misaligned and suppose it it has moved from this position to somewhere in the middle of screen like we had seen in the example then it would have caught it and it would have highlighted that this is the uh, you know part of the screen which is not matching and it would have been uh, an uh, actual visual bug uh, in this case, it's not an actual visual bug. These are not part of the application. So it's a false positive. So coming back uh, to our slides. So we have seen how we can design and run the visual test and we can verify the visual test results. So all of this is done by the plugin. Important part now, we have a couple of major drawbacks. So you can use this uh, approach uh, to some extent but it is not recommended the reason is there is a big overhead of maintaining the local image repository so this image local repository uh, is hosted on my uh, local um, machine it's not on the cloud so anyone um, who wants to use it they don't have access of it and over a period of time when i have hundreds of screen i will have hundreds of screenshot here and manage, uh, managing them manually it's a very tiresome job so for a small project it's fine but uh, if the screen size grew then uh, we would have a lot we would have to spend a lot of time in maintaining the image database 
So that's one of the major drawback. And the other drawback is that uh, what to do about the false positive or situation where we are getting a failure, even though nothing meaningful has changed in the image. So like we saw in the uh, uh, in the demo, uh, we had a false positive. There was no change in the screen as such, but still it failed because uh, the clock time has changed. So because of these issues, it has failed the script. Now it's a false positive. Uh, we know that. Um, so this can be taken care of uh, in the code uh, by taking uh, a screenshot of the app only and skipping this uh, portion of the screen. But we, uh, there could be some uh, cases where we have to enter a dynamic uh, values like OTP or a dynamic code. In that case, the code will be uh, changing every time and if it compares it with uh, the uh, baseline image obviously the code will always be different and it's going to fail the test case so there should be some mechanism using which we should be able to ignore that portion of the screen where the dynamic code is entered so we will see how we can achieve that using uh, the other approach which makes use of a better solution but anyway you can use this for small project uh, it's very simple project you can add uh, you can cover some of these drawbacks but not to a great extent so we will see how we can do uh, we will see a better approach of doing visual UI testing using a different method but that we are going to cover in a separate lecture so thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned cheers bye